I've had my Hightower LT for about two months now. I've taken it trail riding. Oh, whoa, shit! I've been downhill uplifting on it. Oh, how do you get to mint? I've done some car park sending. Send it! And generally, just been messing about in it for two months now. So I feel like I've had enough time riding this bike to tell you my five loves and hates of my Hightower LT. Hate, that's a strong word. I think if I actually hated anything about this bike, I'd probably send it back. So I think a better term would be mildly dislike. Uh, hang on, one sec. That's better. So without further ado, Here's 10 things I love and mildly dislike about my Hightower LT. So for mildly dislikes number one, we have the integrated headset. So I can understand why Santa Cruz did this. Integrated headsets are so simple to install. It's literally, you've got your forks, you've got your frame, drop the bearings in, forks, cup, done. No hammering in cups or anything like that. So it is really easy, but I love tinkering with my bikes. And one of the things I used to love to do is put angled headsets in to slacken them out to make them more downhill orientated as I'm a downhiller at heart. But with this bike, I can't do that. And I wish I could. Number two, the short rear end. So a lot of bikes have been getting longer front centers of late, you know, getting bigger reaches, but it seems like companies are scared of having a longer wheelbase. So they shorten the swing arm to keep that wheelbase in check. And this has two issues. Issue number one is mud clearance. In Scotland, we get a lot of mud and this bike does tend to get bunged up in down by the chainstay yoke. It's not a disaster. It's only happened a couple of times, but a bit more clearance would be nice. Issue number two is that it upsets the weight distribution of the bike. When you're cornering, you want to weight those tires nice and evenly so you can just shrub that corner like an absolute hero it's harder to do with a short back end because you have to bring your weight further forward to weight the tires evenly. This isn't too hard, but it could be easier with a longer back end. So Santa Cruz, just make it a bit longer. One of those uh, flip chips on the axle so you get short, medium and large would be oh, perfect. Number three, the water bottle cage. There's there's not much room for a bottle in here. You can just about fit, I think it's a 500 mil bottle, the half size ones, and it just <laughs> squeezes in underneath the shock. Um, it'd be nice to be able to fit a bigger one, but at least you don't have to mount the water bottle underneath like some bikes and it just gets absolutely plastered with crap. So, silver linings. Number four, the slack seat tube angle. I'm a pretty tall dude, I'm six foot seven, and when I'm climbing, the seat ends up so far back when it's at its highest setting, that climbing ends up being a bit harder than it should be. Um, it's really hard to get my weight forward because the seat is so far back. And what I do to compensate is I slide the seat really far forward in the rails, and then I lodge the tip of the seat right up my bum, get <laughs> really far forward, just so I can get my weight over or centered in the bike to stop that front end wandering. I can see why they do it. Slack seat tube angles just look really cool. It's almost like, looks like the seat's like a spoiler hanging out over the back wheel to give you extra downforce when you're drifting in the snow or something like that. So seat tubes are starting to get steeper, but it's taking its time and I feel like it needs to hurry up. With these longer front centers, you need your seat to be further forward so you can actually weight the bike properly when seated climbing. It's coming. Number five, price. There is no getting around it. Santa Cruz bikes are really expensive. I'm really fortunate that I'm a sponsored rider, so I get my bikes either discounted or parts for free. And I wouldn't be riding a bike of this caliber otherwise, I just couldn't afford it. So I am very lucky. The build I have currently cost me, I'm gonna have to read this, 5,338 pounds and 60 pence. So it's not the most expensive bike in the world. I have built it up with reasonably priced parts, 
Yeah, it's still quite a lot of money to spend on a bike. This mildly dislike is a little bit of a hollow one because I actually feel like the frames aren't ridiculously priced. You get a lifetime warranty on the frame, you get a lifetime warranty on the bearings, so they replace them for free when they wear out. I've never actually broken a Santa Cruz frame and I have broken a lot of other ones. And the performance is obviously next level as well. So yeah, they are expensive, but I think they're worth it. It would be nice if they were cheaper though. So yeah, that's my five mildly dislikes. And if you're thinking, I ain't getting one of them then, uh, just hold that thought, because here are my five loves. Number one, the looks. This is a bit of a superficial one, but I think this bike looks flipping stunning. The clean lines, the cool like sweeping curves, and it just looks really purposeful as well. And it does help that it's got those custom orange decals I stuck on there. They look quite nice. Number two, the build quality. So I mentioned before that I've never actually broken a Santa Cruz frame, which is pretty flipping impressive as it is. But from the paint job to the hardware on the bike, everything is just real top quality. And one of my favorite things about it is the pivot hardware. So it's got these uh, angular contact bearings. So pretty much through the life of the bearing, they never develop play because you can just nip things up to keep things from rattling. And then if they do wear out, you get free ones. Prime. Another thing I really like is the collet style pivot axles. So it's like an axle that you screw through the frame and then there's like a wedge which you drive in to like tighten the axle to the frame. And when you install them properly, they don't come loose. And I've had loads of bikes before and it seems like every ride I'm having to tighten up the pivots. But these ones, they don't come loose. Number three, the rear suspension. So I had the old high tower. He was Officer High Tower. This one's Lieutenant. And the change in the rear suspension characteristics was really quite a lot more than I was expecting. So they've reworked the linkage to make the suspension more supple at the start, supposedly more supportive in the mid-stroke. I've still never really understood that term, uh, but it ramps up more at the end of the stroke and this makes the bike track nicer and it means it doesn't bottom out as evenly and it makes it livelier when you're going through compressions and popping off of jumps. I really like it. Um, it was a big difference over the old bike and I'm a fan. Number four, the size, specifically reach. So I've said already, I'm a big dude and bikes have slowly been getting bigger and they've slowly been getting more comfy. So this one's about 500 mil reach and just feels brilliant. I, I think I could go bigger, but if I was to go for an even bigger front end, I'd really want a bigger swing arm just to keep things in check. But so far, this is the comfiest bike I have ever ridden and I love it. Number five, how it rides. I mean, you've probably read reviews given that you're watching this video, but this thing is just brilliant. It is smooth, it is lively and exciting to ride, and it straight up just plows. I hope it's fast, I've not had a chance to race it yet. I mean, it feels quick, but it's just, it's such a joy to ride. It's making things easier. It's making things more fun compared to my old bike. And yeah, I can't wait to put some more time on this thing. I feel like it's got more to give and I'm really looking forward to racing it this year. So that ladies and gents are my five loves and mildly dislikes of my Hightower LT. If you have any questions about the bike, please let me know down in the comments. And if you have any suggestions for videos I should do on the bike, also let me know down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you would like to see more, and I will see you next Wednesday with Cathro. Thank you for watching.